reason why it's $4,000 is because it's Louis Vuitton, $6,200. And sometimes you may as well pay a little bit more, in my opinion, to get an actual usable bag. I would rather choose her bag because it's way more usable to me. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jess. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I would love to get to 15K uh, soon. I'm, you know, slowly getting there, so all your help would be amazing. I was watching Amelia Rose Closet, I'll link her below, and she was discussing how she has been uh, using her uh, more expensive speedy, it's from the creative director Pharrell. She, these leather speedies tend to be on the higher price point, and she was explaining how, you know, she thought she might regret, regret it because it's such an expensive speedy, but actually she's found herself wearing it with her family and getting the use out of it. And I found this really interesting because I, I read one of her comments which kind of insinuated that it's better to invest in bags that are more usable and larger sized. Um, so the comment was, well, I always thought why people spend so much money on tiny bags for nights out when the truth is, unless you're working as a CEO, top executive or an actress, you won't get the chance to wear it as much. I would rather spend my money on a high quality bag that I use more often. Buying bags without using them is stupid. So if you're using it and it brings you joy, you enjoy it. Anyways, what do you guys think? Is it stupid to buy bags that you don't use? Because I know a lot of us, I mean, I'm guilty guys, have these silly bags that we don't use that much, that we just bought as collectibles or they're just cool to look at, but they can be rather expensive. Like if you look at these like small trunk pieces from Louis Vuitton or, you know, sequin baguettes or you know, even Chanel bags are hardly usable, some of them, but yet we spend so much money on them. So I wanted to compare different bags today and ask you guys what is worth buying. Which one would you choose? Are you somebody who collects really expensive handbags that are more ornamental and really good shelf pieces and you you know, maybe spend less on everyday bags, or you're somebody who like, likes to invest a lot into everyday usable bags, and then spend less on those like sequin bags and evening clutches. Because I found for myself, I used to have a lot of these more shelf pieces, like I had a really cool uh, Chanel Wicker Vanity, these like little micro Chanel bags, um, you know, uh, velvet pieces, that sort of thing. I had a velvet Gucci Marmot. And because they were either delicate or too small or, you know, just not easy to use, I found I would rather invest into bags that were like bigger size, you know, easier to repair, just more everyday bags that don't have like ob obvious logo. That's just what I found that I gravitated towards. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's the right way to collect bags. I think people have their own preferences. So first bags that I want to compare is this metallic Chanel flap bag with coin purse. Very cute collectible bag. Now, I know that pink Chanel bags are highly uh, coveted and a lot of people aspire to get these pieces. This bag is very significant because I think it came from like that Barbie collection, which I mean, a lot of people uh, love the patent bags from the 90s, you know, the pink and, you know, some of those old metallic pieces are extremely desirable. So this was kind of referencing this in a way. And the star shape is always also extremely cute. Although in a way, one may argue this bag is not very practical. It's metallic, which is very delicate. It's not a huge bag and the star coin purse you're paying for is probably a little bit useless and it's ten thousand five hundred and eighty dollars in my personal opinion it doesn't look like a ten thousand dollar bag it looks like a kind of a little bit cheap in a way actually but what who am i to say anyways i want to compare it to the bleed 1923-25 now guys obviously you know what I'm going to say. I, I'm obsessed with Bullied Bag. I love it. I think it's extremely easy to style, easy to wear. It was the first bag ever to have a zipper. And I actually have a, a Bullied myself, which I picked up secondhand for like 7000 something Australian dollars. So, I mean, I'm not going to be explaining pre-love prices today. I'm just talking about retail price. Um, but... If you did want to buy this bag from the boutique, it's currently $11,850. And yes, it is, uh, you know, about a thousand dollars more than the Chanel, but I find this a much more usable bag. The leather is easier to repair. Um, it's a bit more classic. Um, definitely not as collectible, I would say. Doesn't have the same novelty to it. Uh, but yes, I, I personally like, I would rather buy the Bolide over the crazy Chanel bag, but I know most people who are like into handbags would rather go for the funky Chanel bag. So yeah, I, I, for me, practicality is pretty important. Uh, next bag that I wanted to compare is the 
Louis Vuitton micro canned bag from the Anemogram collection. Uh, this is a recent collaboration and this bag is $2,680. It's really small. It's a micro thing, more like a necklace made out of coated canvas and some leather with a little charm on the side. Now, would you rather buy this, guys, or would you rather buy the Gucci uh, GG Small Ophidia shoulder bag? Because, you know, this one is just a little bit more, like, you know, you spend about 500 bucks more, but you're getting, like, a more usable handbag that still has logo, definitely not as collectible. It's a limited edition colour, I suppose, but the appeal of the micro cans is probably more so because it's cutesier it's like a micro bag and it has that little miniature charm on it so yeah guys what would you rather invest into because they're both very high prices and sometimes it, you may as well pay a little bit more in my opinion to get an actual usable bag because i would rather buy the gucci bag in this case because i just think it would be more usable um next bags i wanted to compare is the louis vuitton uh, micro vanity in this gorgeous pink now pearlescent pink is not the easiest to maintain sometimes iridescent coatings can fade off not to mention that this bag is extremely small and i would find it quite useless myself that zipper is also very impractical but it's 2960 australian dollars would you rather buy this guys or would you rather buy the burberry snip bag leather inside and out and it's 3490 So you are paying, you know, around $500 more for a bigger, more usable bag. But this, I would say the Snip bag doesn't have the same novelty as the Louis Vuitton bag. And Burberry, as a brand, doesn't have the same brand power with their bags as Louis Vuitton. You know, people... Louis Vuitton is much more known for their bags than Burberry, although Burberry is trying to, I guess, get a part of that market as well with Daniel Lee. Um, and the snip bag, it's a little bit more low-key, but I personally would find the snip bag more usable just because it's bigger and you can do crossbody, shoulder bag, and the colour is more classic. I love that red colour. Whereas the micro vanity is more of a, like, silly collectible, and I would honestly never wear this micro vanity, although I would arguably say it is way cuter than the snip bag. So what would you rather buy, guys? Uh, let me know. Uh, next, I have the Louis Vuitton Nano Speedy with the sad dog on it. Also from that recent co collaboration. It's $4,000, which is not small money. Um, the Nano Speedy is a very tiny bag. Doesn't fit very much. It's made out of coated canvas, which I wouldn't say is that expensive, like, as a material. You wouldn't think. It's not like this really rare high high quality leather or something like it's four thousand dollars is quite steep but the reason why it's four thousand dollars is because it's louis vuitton nano speedy is very popular and it has that sad dog in it so you're paying for all that or would you rather get for four thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars the hermes her bag which is also a canvas but it's probably i would find this more practical i do have it her i actually have one Wait, where is it it's here so the Hermes Her bag, definitely not the most popular bag. It is a bit impractical, like this opening, but you do have the back zip, and I actually find it quite usable myself. It comes with a little pouch as well. Four eight seventy or four thousand for the Nano Speedy. I would rather choose Her bag because it's way more usable to me. But I know a lot of people wouldn't like this big bag and would rather go for Nano Speedy. Yeah. But, you know, I'm just thinking, like, in terms of value for money, the her bag seems like more of a substantial bag. But, you know, who am I to say again? Just my personal opinion. Now you have this Chanel pouch bag with little chains on it. A very impractical shape, very annoying zipper, similar to, like, the BV uh, Jody bag. We're taking a bit of Jody bag. $6,200. Like, that is not small money for a very useless small bag. Or you could get the Hermes Garden Party for $6,560, which is a few hundred dollars more. Um, and one may argue, honestly, and I would not disagree with you there, that the Garden Party is a very boring bag compared to the Chanel pouch. And Chanel bags are cuter than Hermes bags, but I would rather invest in the everyday bag from Hermes that I would actually wear. And this pouch bag, I wouldn't see my... I, I could not wear this every day. I would hardly wear this at all. And I can't see that leather aging very well. It's white. It's, you know, it's just not going to work. So I personally would rather get the Boring Garden Party, which is in this really robust leather. I spill coffee on this. I've, like, chucked it around, and it's a really hearty bag. So that's what I kind of like about Hermes bags. And I think there is this trend 
as well to getting these really hardy everyday bags. And I think with Amelia Rose's uh, Speedy, it's designed to be worn. It's designed to get this like nice slouch. It's designed to be loved. And I think there is a trend towards buying bags that you can actually wear and you can use. And as time goes by, they have their own charm as they age. I mean, even if you think of the Ro Margot with that slouch, if you think of a slouchy Birkin, two bags I want to compare, just a few left. Uh, the Prada Galleria in the satin mini it, with the diamantes all over it 8300 uh, i mean one satin very delicate two those crystals are going to fall off so i personally would not invest 8300 into a bag like this or you could get the joseph duclos diane bag this one is about 7000 australian dollars joseph duclos as a brand isn't as known as prada but it has a, apparently amazing craftsmanship uh you know saddle stitching amazing hardware and it's less than the Prada bag. I know I would rather go for the Joseph Duclos bag. It looks a lot more timeless, a lot more wearable. And I think as it ages as well, it would age more gracefully than this Prada bag, which would age very badly. Yes, uh, let me know, how do you buy bags? Do you prefer to invest in everyday bags or evening bags? Or do you like to have uh, a bit of both? Do you have a few silly bags in your collection too? Because I definitely have uh, invested in very silly bags as well. So I understand the appeal of that too. Uh, but in general, I like to buy more hearty leathers and bigger everyday bags. So anyways, thanks for listening to my uh, video today and I'll join you guys on my next one. Bye!